storied parts of downtown Vancouver, British Columbia, this is Gas Town, where today 40,000 people line the streets in anticipation of the Gas Town Grand Prix. Welcome back to the Cobblestone in Vancouver. Rod Black along with Ron Heyman. Only moments ago we saw Brian Walton yesterday when the tour to White Rock. Brian Walton is back in the pack there. How does he shape up for today's Grand Prix? Brian's in a great position to win the, win the overall standings here for the Gas Town and White Rock races combined. But as far as the criterium, I know he wants it bad, but without team support here, he's really going to have a tough time. Coors Light, on the other hand, they've got riders, any one of them that could win the race. Swart is really his only challenger for overall, 17 seconds behind, also riding for Coors Light. So that's the rider he has to mark at the same time as he looks for the team tactics and makes the right move because he won't get two chances at it here today. You've won this race three times. You hold the course record. There's another fellow back there named Alex Steeda. He's won twice. He could tie you today. I wish Alex luck. He's a great rider. I know he's peaked for this. He's come off a win in Edmonton in great form with a super team behind him to support him. So uh, he's in the running. All right, quickly, who do you pick for today? I'll go out on a limb here, and I'll pick two riders to do it. Davis Finney of the Coors Light team loves the crowd. I know he wants to, to do it here in Vancouver. He came so close years ago, finishing second once. And, of course, Canada's uh, Gord Fraser riding for Magic Cuts just barely missed the cut for the Olympic team. A tremendously fast sprinter here, and I think Davis is matched, so I say it's a two-horse race between them. All right, we'll hold you to it. Uh, the bikes are ready, the riders are ready, the fans are ready, we're ready. Let's take a look at this historic course through Gastown. 97 riders, 50 laps, 65 kilometers, through Steam Clock Corner. Down the back stretch, Cordova, through a chicane, and then back down Water Street for the 20th Gastown Grand Prix. We'll be watching Colin Davidson today, the National Series leader. His Olympic teammate, Jacques Landre. The Criterium Series leader, Roberto Gaggioli. The man Ron Heyman likes, Davis Finney, the veteran from Coors Light. And yesterday's winner at White Rock, Brian Walton. We pick up the race five laps in, 45 laps to go. And out in front is another one of Ron Heyman's picks today, Ottawa's Gord Fraser. Gord really starting with a vengeance here, taking no prisoners as he moves away from the main field. A very tough way to go this early in a hard, fast race like this. But maybe it's the incentive of a unique prize that the uh, Gastown Grand Prix have, where they, early in the race, to get the ball rolling, have five timed laps. Each of those laps has $200 attached to it. It's compounded so that if the fastest of those five laps happens to be the final one, the rider could make up to $1,000. Gord's moved out early, and if he plays his cards right and builds his pace in his breakaway here, he could be a fairly well-off rider by the end of the day. All right, he gets money, but will it help him or hurt him in the overall scheme of things? I and mean, this is a long race. In the overall scheme of things, it has to hurt him because to go out and expend that much energy is really going to jeopardize his chances it's physiologically impossible for a rider to maintain this kind of pace for the whole distance here. He needs help out there. And there he is, Gord Fraser going out very, very quickly. Gord is definitely a speed rider. You know, he's come off the track program just a few years ago. He was a national team pursuiter, represented Canada in the Commonwealth Games, has made the transition quite effectively to road, just missed the Olympic road team, but has the stamina and the speed combined, which make him a class rider. The pack is not even in sight. Gord Fraser looking behind with 44 laps to go. His lap time there, Ron, was 1 minute 32 seconds. A very quick lap. And it's going to be tough for him to top that, you know, if he keeps going at this pace here. U.S. National Criterium Champion, newly crowned there, off the front of the field, trying to close the gap. That was David McCook from Cocoa Beach, Florida. And Gord Fraser, still way out in front. Here comes the pack, trying to even find him. You can see that Alex Tita doesn't want to see anybody else get off the front there, chasing down the U.S. Criterium Champion as he strings out the field here, going on to the back straightaway. Some 30 to 40,000 people along the streets here in Vancouver, British Columbia. A historic course, a great race, and Gord Fraser... Lightning quick to begin the 20th Gastown Grand Prix. This course has definitely evolved over the years. You know, it started as a four-corner course 
with a record time of one minute four seconds to get around it. We're talking now 138. But, well, normally I'd say at a longer course like this would be easier. They've gone from four corners to seven, which makes it very tough. Riders having to jump out of the corners each time to regain their speed. Would you like to be out there these days? <laughs> The corners make it tough. I'm glad to be on the sidelines just watching and announcing on the race. And there's the pack, and there is Gord Fraser again. Is he slowing or is he getting faster? We'll get a lap time momentarily as he comes down again with 43 laps to go, and his lap time, Ron, is slower. One minute, 36 seconds. Maybe predictable, but then maybe Gord's just holding a little bit back. You know, if he can hold his lead off the main pack but at the same time pace himself carefully maybe he's got a surge for the fifth and final of those timed laps i can hear the cash register ringing already he's making up some money too i'm sure gord's listening to the announcer carefully there every time he crosses the finish line and estimating how much he has left and how close that field is behind him well you know this guy is just lucky to be riding out here we're going to go back a year in ottawa the canadian tire capital challenge and watch as gord fraser takes a tremendous spill he fractured his kneecap but you know what in this race he actually got back up on the bike and he finished third a great ride you know they just lapped the field got back on the bike finished the race but that was it for the rest of the year it wasn't until november that he began his comeback headed down to arizona went stayed down there over christmas and new year's and worked his way back onto the national team program. Well, not only is he back, but he's back and he's leading this 1992 Gastown Grand Prix as the pack starts to pick up the pace now. They're approaching the uh, two laps to go for the time series here. And remember, even if somebody can burst out of the pack and catch Gord just before he crosses the line on the fifth of these timed laps, they could take the fastest lap time if they can surpass his previous best of 132. All right, here he comes. Laps to go, 42. His time is 1 minute 38 seconds, so he is slower, and the pack is 18 seconds back. Probably too much for anybody to close, so it really down, comes down to Gord, if Gord can actually better his time. There is Steven Swart, a busy fellow yesterday at White Rock. He finished second there. He's leading the pack, trying to reel in Gord Fraser. Definitely a sign of a pro on form here when he can finish so strong yesterday and yet be at the front controlling the pace early in the going here. Gord Fraser, a little sign of weakening there? You never know. I mean, he could just be sizing up where he is relative to the field, or he could be hurting and uh, looking for somebody to charge out of the pack and join him. What a pace he has set early on here, though, as he tries to cash in and he tries to build up an even bigger lead. Gord Fraser, Ottawa, Ontario. You can see him using the widest line possible. That way he can straighten out and get on the pedals and... Uh, put down the force as quick as he can and keep his speed high. There's Steven Swart from Hamilton, New Zealand and the rest of the pack and that has to be tough going from pavement to cobblestone. You've been there before. Lucky it's dry here because that could be hairy. Even a little bit of water, say a spilled water bottle on that section of the course could really force riders to take a different line and if they don't know about it in time, even slip out and uh, there's little chance to recover when you slip on a road bike. We're going to get another time here. Laps to go, 41 and 1 minute and 38 seconds again for Gord Fraser. And that leaves one lap to go for this time series. If Gord cannot better his time and no one catches him, he's guaranteed of $200. But if nobody catches him and he betters his time, up to 1000 At the meantime, it looks like Swart is picking up the pace here, maybe hoping that one of his teammates can burst from the field and catch Gord down the back straight or through the final corners before they approach the start finish. He has to be 132, and that has to be heartbreaking, too. Uh, you go those five laps like that, and you'd like to get that extra money, but then you find out, boy, I don't have anything left in my body. It's tough to know when you start a five-lap effort like that, if anybody can come back to you or not. It's, uh, it's a tough gamble, and I know he went out hard and uh, really had to put the hammer down just to distance himself from the main pack. You could see the difference even now from the way he was earlier, and it's going to be very difficult for him to better that earlier lap mark of one... 32 as he comes around and down and you can see the pack there is the raging bull Jamie Polinetti 
taking the corners as they go into the series of tight turns here, for forcing